Hello, everybody. Got somebody. Hello, say hello when you come in. Happy Flower Friday. Flower Friday, I am not Michelle. Obviously. Hello, hi Joan. Michelle has had something um, ex unexpected come up that she needed to deal with ASAP. So you guys have me today. You have me. So in Michelle's beautiful and unique fashion, get up out of the bed, get up off the couch. Ready? I'll, and I'll only do this for her and you guys. It's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> that was for you, Monk. <laughs> Look at me jiggle. <laughs> I just jiggle in the way here. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this was kind of impromptu. So what I'm going to do today, <laughs> you guys like that? <laughs> um, I, I'm going to go through some wood burning tips. Yeah, Michelle's okay. Don't worry. She's good. She's good. I know, don't hurt my back with all that jiggling. <laughs> um, we're going to go through some uh, wood burning tips and techniques. And I'm going to finish a flat. I, I had a flower wreath started anyways. So, um, you guys like that, huh? <laughs> I don't do it as good as Michelle, but, <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome. Friday morning. It's fun. Oh, hello, Regina. Hi, Liz. Oh, there is everybody. You're right. I do the dance for my friend. Anyways, we're, I'm going to finish off a flower. Um, I mentioned it yesterday. I was, I am going to be using, guys, I have a gazillion family members who are all football fans. So football season starts next week. So I am scurrying and making all these wreaths for my family. So I'm going to do a flower. Um, we're going to use the leftover poly burlap, the red, white, and blue that I used. Um, so I only used a half a roll of each color when I did um, the wreath with the big buffalo head. So I'm using the other half of it and we're gonna do a flower and I'm gonna use this sign. So it's the same as the vinyl I did yesterday, except it's an eight inch sign. But let's go over some wood burning stuff because I know there's a lot of questions all the time. You know, I seen one the other day where I was talking about wood burning and somebody said, well, don't you have to stay between the lines? And I heard you have to stay between the lines and blah, blah, blah. Let's go through some. Okay. So I'm going to bring you guys down. Hello. Hello. Yes, they are available, Dawn. Just check it out. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, come on. Nope, we don't want to see the whole Lori's messy room. I'm not very good with technology. You guys all know that. Okay, so to start, you love it in pink? Me too, it's my color, right? Now, when you're wood burning, this is my wood burner, and we'll go through it in a sec. Um, I don't, I usually wood burn here because I have my door open directly in front of me. Now, when I am wood burning a lot of mesh, I do wear my, oh shoot, I should have brought it out. I, uh, I put, just put it away. I, I do use my HEPA filtered mask because burning the mesh, there's plastic in it. And with plastic, there is a trace of the uh, materials that latex are made out of. And I'm allergic to latex. So if I'm doing a whole bunch of mesh, I do wear a, I normally wear a long sleeve shirt because wood burning mesh makes my skin itchy. And I also wear a 
uh, HEPA filtered respirator um, that I got from Amazon. It's got the cartridges and that'll just filter out any of the micro particles that are in the air. Um, but for this demonstration, but I can't talk when I have my mask on. So for this demonstration, I'm not going to, but I have my French doors open and I have my windows open and we're good to go. Oh, is it not available? Make it like Lori's, Regina? Oh, okay. So let's go over stuff. Um, I usually do it sitting here at my craft table and instead of having to always remove, now this is a brand new thing. I, I must go through at least six cutting mats a year. This is a new cutting mat. I don't want to ruin it. At least let it last a month. <laughs> um, so I put a um, hand towel, a white hand towel, so that I can see the lines on the grid of my glass mat. So I have just a hand towel underneath my glass mat. And it's enough that it's not going to warp like the heat from my wood burner is not going to warp my my cutting mat okay now this is a tempered glass cutting mat and you can get the link for this mat it's under Lori's favorite tools up over on unique in the creek.com this exact cutting mat I got on Amazon um, it's an awesome cutting mat so if you do plan on doing wood burning or whatever do yourself a favor and grab one of these. It's under $20. Um, it already has all the, um, the marks on it and grids on it. Um, it's tempered glass. Uh, I've dropped it many times. It still hasn't broke. <laughs> I should say that with, <laughs> with my fingers crossed. Um, and it's 16 long and uh, 12 wide which is normally we're just wood burning 10 by 10 or 10 and a half by 10 and a half. <gasps> it's $40 now? Are you Canadian or American? Holy crap, I'm sure when I bought this, it was like literally under, I think it was like $18.99 when I bought it or $17.99, wow. Okay, US, wow. Okay, they've seen the trend of people buying these. So they've jumped on that. So you can also use a glass cutting board from the dollar store and make your own lines on it. So as you can see on mine, hopefully you can see on mine, um, I've actually accentuated the 10, 10 inch mark by a black Sharpie marker. All I did was do a black line down the back of my uh, glass mat. And then this orange one, is 10 and a half okay you had them 15 bucks I don't know it's crazy they see the trends and then they hike up the prices I don't know I'm sorry guys but anyways I still would pay $40 for mine because I use it a lot anyways like I said I I have accentuated the 10 10 inch mark and the 10 and a half not too many times I go past 10 10 and a half Okay, and then I, like I said, I do the marker on the back side. So when I'm heat sealing, I'm not, the, the marker is not going to get erased. Okay, so that's the cutting board. Now you can use a cookie sheet, um, like a cookie tin, uh, cookie, you know, the tin cookie sheets or cutter, or the cookie thingies, you know what they are. And if you have an old one, just, you know, take your, ruler if you're doing 10 inch mark a 10 inch line and then you can just pull out your mesh and measure it like that um 8.99 at hobby lobby there you go go to hobby lobby 8.99 perfect i did not know that so i bought this a couple years ago so obviously you know the market you know, when they see it, people see a trend, the market, you know, lots of other people start making the same thing. So when I got this, it pretty much was only on Amazon, I could see. Okay. Oh, yes. Glass top from an old fridge. Absolutely. For sure. Anything that's not going to burn through. Okay. And I, I just err on the side of caution by putting a uh, hand towel underneath. Okay. Just an old hand towel. Um, anyways, 
So, and what else I do is I take two of my clips, my metal clips that I use all the time. These two are even your pink ones. And I have them at the end of my cutting mat, okay? These are gonna help hold my mesh down. So I have two hands free when I do my wood burning. All right, so we are going to, I also have a metal ruler. You can get uh, this metal ruler. I get just got it at the dollar store. So just in the, um, uh, where the pens and rulers and everything, the stationary section of the dollar store, you can find a metal ruler. It's got like a cork on the back. So it is perfect because it does lift the cork, lifts it off your mat just a little bit, enough that you can use it for making a straight line when you're cutting your your mesh, okay? So these are the tools I use for uh, good um, wood burning techniques. I also have two packages of rectangle boards I use because when you're wood burning your mesh, the, the best way to use your mesh, especially if you're making a flower, more than likely if you're wood burning your mesh, you're probably making a flower. And to make a flower petal, the best way is to have your mesh nice and flat, okay? Like I have here. See how flat it is? It's not all curved up. And the way I do that is when I'm finished cutting my mesh and it's all rolled up, so you know when you're finished cutting your mesh, it's usually rolled up like this, right? What I do is I'll take my pieces of mesh Let's use the blue so you guys can see. Okay. And I have pile it so once it's all rolled like this, right? Okay, so I'll make it, I pile it on it itself. So let's put one piece. I take one package of the rectangle boards and then <clears throat> I pile move the rectangle board, put it on. Pile, put it on. Now it's easier right now because it's not curling up because I already have it flattened. But you get the gist, all right? And then once you have all your mesh in a pile like this, I can see you, Jackie. I take another board, a uh, set of rectangle boards, and I put it on the top and then I leave it like this overnight okay and when I get up in the morning my mesh is nice and flat and ready to use to make some beautiful petals all right so that's just a little hint on how I keep my mesh flat okay so let's start off with the poly burlap okay so poly burlap when you hear you want to keep between the lines it is poly burlap that most people are referring to, to keep between the lines, which means when you're wood burning, which I'll just show you. So the first thing you want to do, if you're opening a fresh roll, okay, you want to square off your, um, the end of your mesh. Well, Dave must be home. So what you're going to do is unroll your mesh and you're gonna make sure that your bottom, your bottom seam here is lined up with one of your lines on your, your cutting board or your glass cutting mat. All right, and then you're going to take your wood burner. Now this wood burner, this one I believe is Walnut Hollow. It's just the, the inexpensive one, that's it. And it's the tip that comes on with it and before I use it I always make sure that the tip is on tight okay so always check now this is hot so that's why I'm using the pliers please 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 in God's name do not touch the end of this because it will hurt so just make sure it's tightened you can do that before you even turn it on um, this one there is no temperature control it's just on off which is fine because I don't use, I've had a couple of the temperature control ones. I never use them. I always have it at full blast anyways. Okay. So I'm 
rolling this out. Now, I'm just going to clean up the edge here. What you're gonna do is this tip is angled, all right? So you want the tip of it at the top and you're gonna use it like a pen, okay? And when you're cutting it, for just for poly burlap, you're going to go in between the two lines. Even if it's all askew and wonky or whatever, stay in between that line, the, the line, okay, like that. Even if it curves or whatever, because in the end, it ends up being a perfect 10 by 10. I don't know why, but it does. And it's only poly burlap that you really should do this with, okay? Um, I'm making you nervous. So once I've cleaned up the edge, I'm now going to put the end of it, the edge of my mesh in my clips. So now I don't have to hold on to my mesh at the end, or you can just put something heavy. I just find the clips work because it'll keep it squared on your cutting board, okay? Don't be nervous, I am professional. I promise, I am professional. <laughs> okay, so we have it right at the edge on our cutting board. I have it lined up, the factory edge is lined up squared right at the bottom and I can see my marker line of the 10 inch right here. So I am going to find the, the closest. Oh, hi David A. Franklin. Hi. Um, the closest two vertical lines to the 10 inch. And I'm going to go between those two lines. All right. So there, right here is the, the closest to my 10 inch and I'm going to just cut in between those two lines. And that will give you a perfect 10 by 10 piece wood burned. Okay, we'll do that again. So I'm pulling, just pull it out, press your clip, Put the top in, put the bottom in, make sure we're squared. So just move your roll of mesh to square it up. All right. And again, find out where your closest two lines is to the 10 inch and follow the cutting right between those two. just like that, okay? Even if it's squirrely, that's how you're gonna cut it. And that is how you're gonna get your perfect 10 by 10 piece. All right, so once you've done wood burning quite a bit, you, you get really fast at it, so. Um, but it really does help when you have little tips and tricks like this, it really helps um, with, you know, speeding along the process of wood burning your mesh. Now that's poly burlap. Now poly burlap, pretty much I think anytime you use poly burlap, unless you're doing poofs, you need to wood burn poly burlap. It will fray like nobody's business, okay? You sneeze on it, it will start having the strings. So make sure you wood burn your poly burlap. And like I said, it's not hard. Just use your, make sure you have, you know, good precautions, you know, a good airflow in your room, or you're doing it outside, or you're wearing a mask or something, okay? Your dog's looking for them. Dave just came home and let them out. All right, so let's move on to a deluxe foil. So this mesh has a lot of foil in it, but don't be scared of the foil because uh, the only thing that you cannot wood burn, um, what mesh you cannot wood burn is a actual real jute. Now, fabric mesh is not real jute, okay? I know it does say some, a lot of times it'll, the description will say jute mesh. It's really hard to decipher when you're just a customer, but there is very, very 
little chance that I will buy any mesh that has jute in it. Um, saying that, it's also called uh, cotton. Uh, what is it? Cotton something, cotton strand or something. That too cannot be wood burned. Um, just anything that's mostly plastic or have metallic. Okay. So again, I am going to clean the edge of my mesh here. So I'm just kind of squaring it just like this. And it doesn't really matter what line I'm following. I'm just going to follow. Oh, is this still on? Oh shoot, I shut it off for some reason. I'm just going to square this up. Now, this is where we're not going to be going in between lines. Now you can kind of with the, the deluxe foil if you want. Um, I just use a one of the uh, metal rulers for anything else other than poly burlap. Um, horizontal wide stripe you can use between the lines too, but the thing I find with horizontal wide stripe is sometimes it's really wonky. I don't know if it's the type of mess, mesh or um, the process of rolling it up or, and stuff, but sometimes it comes out super wonky and then you really can't follow the lines. Um, so that's where the ruler comes in handy. So you're going to, again, square up your, your mesh. And I'm just cleaning the edge up here. So I'm just going to use my ruler and follow my ruler with my black line that is on my glass cutting mat. Okay. Hold it down. Take your wood burner. I don't know if it's hot enough yet. And just go along your ruler, your metal ruler. Now, you won't want to do this on a wood ruler unless the wood ruler has that piece of metal. Sometimes you can get a the wood ruler and it has that metal um, in it. That will work too, but a plastic ruler or just a plain wood ruler, I wouldn't because you'll... It'll start on fire. <laughs> okay, so I've cleaned up the edge. Again, we are going to flip this around. Now, we're going to measure this because when you want to make a perfect square, some you want to check A, check to see what the length is, so or the width is. This actual this one is actually ten and a half. So to make a perfect square, we're going to have to cut this piece, this roll at 10 and a half. Um, I've been telling people lately to always measure your mesh. Don't go by what is said on the mesh because I'm finding that it's not correct. So if you're going to cut a whole roll of mesh at 10 inches because it says it's 10 inches and you're making say a Dean Michael petal where you need a perfect square, you're gonna cut that whole roll of mesh and gonna be really upset because you come to find out that it's actually 10 and a half, not 10. So err on the side of caution before you even do anything, just throw your roll onto your cutting mat or whatever and just see what the actual width of it is. So this is a 10 and a half inch roll, okay? 10 and a half inch. I'm not sure what it says on the package, but I'm gonna cut this mesh 10 and a half by 10 and a half because I, I want a perfect square. So I'm going to push my clip up, slide that in, push, slide that in. We make sure it's all squared. Now the orange on my my glass cutting mat, the orange line, I know is 10 and a half. All right, so I'm going to put my ruler, make sure everything's squared, put my ruler down the orange line, which is 10 and a half. And then I'm just gonna take my uh, wood burner, okay, use it at like a 45 degree angle and hold it like a pen. Okay, so if you're using it at a 45 degree angle, you're not just cutting it with the tip. Okay. 
And we're gonna hold it like that and just slowly go down your ruler. And once it's heated up, it cuts it like butter. And we have a very nice 10 and a half by 10 and a half piece. Yeah, this was definitely 10 and a half. So you can measure before you cut the rest of your roll, your first piece, make sure you measure. So it's 10 and a half this way and 10 and a half this way. So the rest of the roll can be cut just like that. So make sure you measure. Measure twice, cut once, or measure three times, cut once. What's the saying? So you can see how easy it cut through all that metallic. No problem. Do one more. So we're all squared up and 45 degree angle. All right, like that, hold it like a pen and there you go. Okay, so that is deluxe foil. It's, you know, three quarters of it is the uh, aluminum foil or the metallic foil in there. You can see it cuts no problem. So let's move on to horizontal wide stripe. I know this packaging says 10 inches, but when you measure it, it's definitely 10 and a half. So I'm gonna cut this piece at 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Now, you can, like I said, this mesh is fairly new to the market and you can do it like a, a poly burlap going, you know, in between the lines. However, like I said, it, it kind of comes, sometimes the roll is a little bit wonky. So I'm, I'm gonna just clean this up first. So I am going just between the line here. Okay, so I'm gonna, again, clip it. We are making a flower today, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, now, like I said, I measured it, it was 10 and a half. This one isn't too wonky, like some of them I've had, but with my horizontal wide stripe, I just use a ruler, my friends. I don't bother going in between the lines. It's just, much easier for me um, to use my ruler. So I'm just gonna put my ruler at the 10 and a half. It's more important to make sure that um, you're sizing, especially if you're making a Dean Michael pedal, is on point. All right, and then I'm just going right down. Again, 45 degree angle. I'm going to measure, make sure it's a square before I cut the rest of the mesh. So that is 10 and a half. That is 10 and a half. So I can continue on um, with 10 and a half for sure. Okay, so it's up to you. Have a look at your roll, see if it's wonky or not. Rule of thumb for me for horizontal wide stripe, I just use the ruler. Okay, the only one, like I said, the only one I will ever go between the lines for is the poly burlap. And then let's try this new mesh. This new mesh is a extra large wide foil stripe mesh. Okay, even though this says that it's 10 and a half, I'm still going to measure it. And it's actually a little over 10 and a half. Uh, it's, yeah, it's about 10 and a half. Yeah, 10 and a half will be good. I'm gonna clean up the edge. So I'm just kind of squaring it up here. Clean up the edge. So I'm just going down and following one of these lines. Now the middle of this mesh is like a value mesh with metallic. 
the outer part is actual um, metallic strip. Um, it cuts, as you can see, it cuts no problem. And with this one, you may want to wood burn it because wood burning will almost put a stopper on these big extra large uh, foils slipping out of your mesh. Okay, I know some, I've seen uh, a few people um, having an issue with it slipping out of the mesh and coming out. If you're worried about that, wood burn it, okay? It does make a stopper and prevent that. And it prevents this middle part as well, which is more of a value mesh um, from fraying either. And then again, we're just going to put it in our clips. All right. I'm going to take my ruler because these lines are really wonky plus they're really really tight knit so you're you're not going to be able to um, go between the lines on this one so that's again where your ruler is going to come in nice and handy and I'm putting it on my orange line which is my ten and a half so you can see why I emphasize ten and ten and a half because when you put your mesh on sometimes you can't see your numbers so I don't even look for the numbers. All I do is look for my color. Like I said, my black is 10, my orange is 10 and a half, and I know that. So I'm just gonna run my ruler along the orange, and I'm pressing down on my ruler so my mesh does not move. We're using a 45 degree angle, like a pen, and at a nice pace, because you don't wanna stop, because it'll burn. There you go. You have a nice clean cut uh, 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch piece. Let's measure 10 and a half. It's a little bit over 10 and a half, but there we go. Two edges nice and clean. Okay, and then fabric mesh. Oh, I thought I brought a fabric mesh out. Hold on. Just grab one, I have one right here. Fabric mesh, you wanna clean up your edge. Definitely measure your fabric mesh. It normally is two, 10 and a half, but just double check. It's 10 and a half. Now this is where sometimes the description says, has the word jute in it. Um, it's not actual like burlap jute, so it does wood burn. I don't know what, what it, I'm assuming it's fabric, some kind of fabric twined, um, in here because it does wood burn perfectly. So I don't know what is, it's made in here, but it does wood burn. So again, I'm just going to put my ruler on my orange line. I have it squared up at the bottom here. All right, 45 degree angle. Just slowly go along your ruler. And voila, you have now wood burned fabric mesh. Okay, so if those are just a few little tips I've learned along the way of the actual wood burning of mesh. Um, just little tricks that help the process speed, you know, speed along here. Um, the my mat is 16 by 12. This one, so I usually never go over, you know, past 10 and a half. Um, this mesh cut really nice. This I love this mesh. Now this one is sold out, this color. It sold out when I did the Scarecrow, but it wood burns beautifully as well. It's got a lot of foil in it, but like I showed you, wood burning foil mesh is not an issue. I hope that helped with wood burning. Little tips and tricks. Um, and as you do more, you get really fast. Like I think I can do a, a wood burn a whole roll of mesh within like two minutes. So
It's pretty easy. So, let's make the flour, because it's Flour Friday. Now, I this is a um, soldering iron holder. It's all metal. I just bought it off, um, oh, fancy you, you asked that. Um, I got it off Amazon. However, somebody, I can't remember who it was, somebody said they just use a coffee cup. They just literally throw their wood burner into a coffee cup. I would think that would work because it's made for hot stuff. So you can try a coffee cup, um, but this stand, I don't even know how much it was. I use it all the time. The, the, um, the wood burner does come with this little dinky, like, stand. I don't know how you're supposed to, there we go. Like that, and this curvature that's on this little stand, it goes like this. So you can use the stand it comes with. Just be careful, as you can see, it slides, it will fold. Um, just be careful when you're using this one um, because it's not super um, dependable. And always, always, un don't just shut your wood burner off, unplug it as well. If you're, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, A freak when it comes to that stuff. I don't want my house burning down. So I always, always unplug my wood burner. I don't just shut it off. Okay. At least when you unplug it, you'll remember the, the, the unplugging of it because there's many times in bed I'll be late like before I used to unplug everything. Same with my glue gun. I always unplug that too. Um, I'll be laying in bed. It's like, Oh God, did I turn it off? And then I'll remember the thing of pulling the, when you're just flicking it off, you may not remember that you flipped it off. However, you will remember pretty much if you unplugged it. So I, just my two cents. Alrighty, so once you got your mesh wood burned, we are using royal blue, white, and red poly burlap. Look how nice and flat they are. And you'll see when you use it flat, your petals turn out beautifully. Okay, so this is the other half of the red, white, and blue that I'm using from the other day. Um, I am making, I'm putting this sign on the center of my wreath. This is one of our new football ones. This one's 1965. It says, beware, dot, dot, dot. You are entering a football zone. And it's a football player crashing through the wall. And the football player has a buffalo head. Girl, girl, girl. What team is that? Okay, so when I'm using these 8-inch signs, I like to scuff up the back because this is really smooth. And there is nothing for your um, glue to grip on, okay? So we're going to scuff up the back lightly. You don't want to do it too deep. If you do it too deep, you're going to start getting into the color. So I just kind of take a piece of sandpaper and go one way, go the other way. Give it a good scuffing so that the glue actually has something to grip on. Okay, then you're going to take your pipe cleaner and your cable mount. Now, this is if you don't have a hole puncher for metal, which I do and I can't, no, I don't know where it went. I'm going to take the actual padding off this cable mount because I want the cable mount to be plastic right onto the metal. So I just remove this pad. Oh, I can plug in my glue gun or turn it on. And the reason we removed this is just because the, after being hung up in the heat and everything, the adhesive on the, the padding 
will eventually give way. Now, in any heat, there's not too many glues that will stand up in like really severe heat, like some of your your, your states have been getting. Um, so if you do live in a very hot state, uh, my recommendation to you is to actually put two holes just on the side of your uh, your sign and use the holes and pipe cleaners to put your sign on, okay? Because in that extreme heat, I don't care what glue you're using, it's not gonna last. But up here in Canada, we don't get 110. So I am just gonna use, I've been using this quick hold. It seems to work really well. Um, it is made by the same company of E6000 and it does um, cure faster than the E6000. Well, this one's E6000 plus. I'm not sure what the plus is. Anyways, I use this quick hold. I seem to like it a lot. A lot of people use DAP as well. Um, we can't get DAP here in Canada, so... Um, I've been using this quick hold. All right, so I'm going to put some of this quick hold around the outside of the cable now. Woo! Now that came out fast. Wipe the tip of it. And I'm going to center it. So these are eight inch signs. So I'm gonna go four and four. Right where my thumb is, or my finger is. I'm just gonna use the DAP. Now you can use like the E6000 and then hit it with some hot glue. So you can use the sign right away. The DAP or this quick hold, it, it grips pretty fast, okay? Um, or you can make sure that you um, do let it cure though before you start really tugging on the pipe cleaner. So the best thing to do is do your sign and let your sign sit overnight before you actually use it, okay? You wanna give that E6000 or whatever glue you're using a chance to really grip and cure um, before actually pulling you know, the pipe cleaners and stuff like that. So my sign is ready to go. I'm just gonna put it to the side. And we are going to start this flower. I am doing course blue red and white and I'm just using a bubba pop petal I wasn't planning on doing flower Friday so I didn't come up with anything new <laughs> but I was doing I was already working on this flower so this is just the bubba petal and the team colors that I'm doing it for is obviously blue white and red and you'll be able to see how nice it's going to look with the center in there. Now you can do, we pretty much have almost every color of poly burlap in stock. So if you want to do something similar for your favorite team, um, I do have a list here. And I'm going to go and try and match the poly burlap colors um, because I can physically see them in the warehouse. I'm going to try and match them up and attach each of the colors to the, not attach it, but link them to each specific football team. Okay, because there's different oranges in stock, there's different browns. Um, so I wouldn't want you to buy the wrong blue because like this blue, there's a royal blue and there's an even lighter blue and then there's a navy blue, and then there's a smoke blue, and then there's a country blue. So you're looking at like five different blues. So. We are gonna do the bubble petal. 
So I'm just doing the outside row. I am using the large board. I am doing row two. We're starting on row two. We're doing the normal holes on row two. So that is 16 of them, okay? Row three, I wanna do 16 white. I wanna do 16 of each color. So it's all the, there's not more of one color than the other. So I'm doing on row three, the farther apart holes. So the, where it's spaced here is that's the normal hole, right? Instead of using the normal hole, I'm using the two farther apart ones. So we have, it'll be 16 for white. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right. And then row uh, four, I'm doing eight red. And then row five, I'm also doing eight red, which gives me the 16 red. So we got 16 blue, 16 white, and 16 red. And that was a half a roll of each color. So I got, I'm making, I'm making two wreaths out of one roll of each color. So to make the bubble petal, look how nice and flat it is. It's so nice when it's, when it's flattened out. We're gonna do it curl up, which there's not much of a curl, but you can kind of tell it's, you know, start wanting to curl up a bit. You're gonna turn it into a diamond shape in front of you. I always have the factory top left, bottom right edges, always the same. Always top left, bottom right. When I have it in a diamond shape, I am going to take the top corner, bringing it to the bottom corner, and the nice thing with poly burlap is it does fold and it lays nicely. So once you flatten it like this, it's pretty much gonna stay like that, okay? It's not like um, normal deco mesh where normal deco mesh will do whatever it wants to do. And then you can clip your edges because these two corners up at the top here with that long, that's what you're gonna see. So that is what you want to make sure are even. You want a nice crisp point. And if you have a 10 by 10 perfect piece, it, it lines up really well. So we have a nice piece right here. And then I'm gonna take this bottom corner and I'm just gonna fold it up just below this long edge here. Okay, just like that. And then I put my left hand with my finger right down the center. So right where this point is, put my finger down, holding it down, and I'm gonna flip the right side over my hand, just like that. And I'm gonna make sure that these two points are the same size, like they're the same length there. Okay, so that's what we got. It looks like two little, I guess, rabbit ears or something. And then I'm going to, at the bottom here, where it's flat here, this is where we're gonna pinch and make our nub. And for this one, I do the bottom. So I kind of put my pointer fingers right in the center. Okay, and then I bring, my, with my thumb, I'll slide the bottom up to the center. And then I'll take the top and slide it to the center. Okay, and that's right, this part right here is what we're gonna put right into the zip tie. Okay, you're gonna go into the zip tie about a half an inch. So I, I you know, you can just judge. I have a small finger, so about a, a fingertip is Perfect for me. All right, and once you got it in there, you're gonna pull it nice and tight. We can take our clips off now. And there's our petal. Now, it's poly burlap. No matter if you wood burn it or not, it is still gonna have some strings. Just cut your strings off and try not to touch it too much. All right, and the, you can see why you have to do your petals. The uh, factory edges is very, very important because 
when we're doing this kind of wreath, we always want the factory edges showing. We don't want the cut edge showing because the cut edge tends to have, you know, some strings and stuff. If you're showing the factory edge, it looks a lot more finished and it actually, you know, it looks nicer. So that is the Bubba pedal and it's curving. The Bubba pedal curves the same way. When you're doing the Rita pedal, um, you're scrunching it up the middle and the curves go both ways. So that is the difference between the Bubba pedal and the Rita pedal. Okay, once you get it in there, we're gonna cut the zip tie. Now you can do all of row one and then go back and cut all your zip ties. We'll do this again. Curl up, turn it into a diamond, factory edge on the top left, bottom right. Let's bring this top corner down, line up the edges. So make a nice point up on this corner, a point this corner. Now you, you can put your clips on, but like I said, poly burlap really behaves itself. So once you flatten it, it pretty much stays like that. I'm gonna flip this corner, bottom point up. Put my left hand, so my finger is running right down the middle. We're gonna flip this over right over your hand and making sure that both are the same length. This one's a little bit shorter, so you're just gonna adjust down here so that they're both the same. There we go. All right, and then put your fingers right in the center like that, push down with your thumb, bring the bottom in to the center, then bring the top into the center, and then you're gonna put right into your zip tie, about a half an inch, and pull tight. So again, your factory edges are showing and you have a nice crisp petal. Okay, and I'm going counterclockwise um, because then if you go counterclockwise, you don't have to touch the mesh again to lift it up um, to make sure that your factory edges are showing. Um, when you place it into the zip tie, if you're going counterclockwise, it automatically, the factory edges automatically show. Okay, we have one more. Oh, I already have one made here. So, and, and you can pre-make them, obviously, putting a little rubber band, and we do sell this 1,500 elastic bands that you just band it, and then once you've made, banded the petal, you can put it to the side and make all your petals, petals first, and then go in and put them all in to the, onto the board. Alrighty, so they, that is number uh, row two finished, 16 blue. All right, and now we're gonna do white. And the white is the, the uh, spaces that are a little bit farther apart, like I explained when we started. to take this bracelet off. This keeps catching. So if you have your petals pre-made, you can go around and just start sticking them in. Again, only about a half an inch into the zip tie. And we're gonna do 16 of the white. Why am I not seeing any comments? Hopefully I'm still live. All right, well, I'm gonna keep going. Hopefully I'm still alive. still alive. All right, let's do the white. Same thing, left, top left, bottom right, top corner, bring it down, line up your edge, making sure your corner, paying more attention to the top two corners. All right, and flatten it, bottom, up just below this line, put 
Put your hand, your finger right down the center, flip it over. Do any adjustment you need to make sure that they're both the same length. Put your finger in the middle. Bring the, thanks Lynn. Bring the bottom up to the center, top to the center, and put it in the zip tie. While you're, after you put it in the zip tie, you want to make sure that your pedal is laying nicely so before you start putting like the red on. It's much easier when your color, like the white is all exposed. Fix them and then move on to your next color. So this is just a cute, like this is a really an awesome project for a football wreath because it's nice to look at and you know when people around here when they see something like this they either think patriotic or bills <laughs> so, especially if you have a football center in it Alrighty, so that's 16 white, and now we're going to move on to the red. So there's going to be 16 total red, but I'm doing 8 on row 4 and then 8 on row 5. So we do still have some extras left over. I think there's one, two, four pieces still left over, and it's still the same rule that I used on the last wreath I made. So again, I still wanna go counterclockwise, so I don't have to lift up anything. It will, the factory edge lays. On top of the next one. What is everybody doing on this long weekend? Anybody have huge plans? We are moving Lolly to university tomorrow. She moves into residence tomorrow. I don't know if I'm excited or nervous or anxiety ridden. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm feeling yet. <laughs> Monday is a holiday for both USA and Canada. So keep that in mind when you are ordering stuff. Okay, that's row four. And then row five will come in and fill up these gaps between these uh, right here. So row five, I'm going to be using the normal holes and the shared holes. So this is going to go down back up and close it till you hear that zip and 
then the cent two center holes is where my pipe cleaners are going to go for my sign. And then after football season for this one, I could put a patriotic, if I lived in the States, I could put a patriotic sign and have a dual purpose wreath. Now, if you're a divided house and you have two double doors, you could make one for one team and a flower for the other team. That would be cool. Now it's going to get tight in the center here on row five because the poly burlap is fairly thick. But do the best you can getting it in there and without, you know, covering up the, the middle holes. If you do cover up the holes, it's okay because you can just use, you know, this hole and this hole right across to put your pipe cleaners in. If you're asking questions, I, I'm sorry, I can't see your questions. I don't know why. I do want to see what everybody's doing this weekend. Hockey, um, we'll have to see. You got it. It's we got to be really careful that you don't infringe on any copyrights when you're doing stuff like this. Now we're basically just using the colors and the sign has no infringing on it. So you gotta be careful. This is, piece is a little bit jacked up. All right, we have one more and we are done. So I made two football wreaths with one roll of red, one roll of blue, and one roll of white. And they're fairly large wreaths. So if you have double doors and you want to make two of these, you only need one roll of each color. Last one is always the hardest to get in there. There we go. Okay, and I'll cut these off. And there we go. I need to zoom because this is, let's see how big it is. We're about 27. No, 26 inches in diameter. All right, this is the back. So the blue was every hole, normal hole on row two. The white was the uh, further apart holes. There's 16 on row three. Row four was the normal holes, eight of them. Row five 
was the normal holes and shared holes. It looks like stitching going around. So that gives us 16 of the red. And then these two center holes are where I'm gonna go down with my pipe cleaner and my sign. I am going to just take a zip tie, go in one hole, back up the other, and do it up till we hear some clicking. Cut the tail of the zip tie off, and then we have a hanger, a hanger wreath. Okay, and now we're gonna put our sign on now. I'm just gonna loosely, I'm not gonna pull tight, just so you guys can see what it looks like on. And just loosely twist it in the back. This petal is driving me nuts. And there we go. So tomorrow, once it's cured a little bit more, um, I'll pull it a little tighter and then we'll clip these pipe cleaners shorter and put them back down the hole so we keep the back all nice and neat. And there we go. And then for this one, after our football season's done, you can change it out and put another sign in the center, maybe for patriotic or whatever. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm not I'm not looking forward to tomorrow at all. I will be crying. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing actually, because I think my emotions are gonna be everywhere. I have to fix, I don't like this petal. All right, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you for joining me on Flower Friday. Um, it is pretty cool. Not, not bad for a football wreath, right? I could make a hanging bow with this football ribbon, but I think I like it like just like this. And then we're gonna stop touching it so it stops spraying. <laughs> but you can use you can use any mesh. I just happen to have almost all the colors in the poly burlap, and poly burlap really is a nice mesh to make uh, flowers like this um, because it behaves itself. It wood burns cleanly. The only thing is, is the fraying. But once you stop touching it, which I should stop doing. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it will stop fraying as well. Alrighty. So thank you again for joining me and hopefully, uh, Michelle will be back next week or the following week, um, for, oh, I can sh zoom up. Um, the, oh, let me hold it up. There we go. You can see the whole thing. It's pretty big. Let's go Buffalo. <laughs> I love the Bubba petal too. It's my favorite petal. Um, way better. Because I'm not the greatest at making petals. I'm not OCD or anything. So, you know, I, I kind of pay attention, but I kind of don't. It is what it is. Uh, but the Bubba petal always works for me. So, um, and I like the way it, you know, goes around the uh, wreath. Okay. Well, have a wonderful uh, weekend and rest of your uh, day. It's a beautiful day outside. Um, I may be live later. We'll see what time Lolly comes home. Um, but whatever you do, have fun doing it. Stay safe and be well. Talk to you guys soon. Bye, everybody.